The past few days have brought to my channel an influx of very entertaining commentary from disgruntled Rapture watchers. Apparently, yours truly is a hateful, unregenerate accuser of the brethren who is out to divide the body, who is also lazy, shallow, and jealous of big channels. You know, people often ask me if Rapturists come to me with compelling arguments to push back on my videos. Here's your answer, folks. In the mind of a rapture watcher, making fun of my subscriber count is a good argument. This really is about as deep as it gets in terms of biblical correction <laughs> from the watching crowd. I very much enjoyed this little gem telling me I can still go eat at McDonald's, which proves the rapture is imminent. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I, I don't mean to laugh at you, but really, yes, these are their good arguments. However, on a more serious note, once in a while, there is an attempt to correct me with a Bible verse. This person here, for example, gave me Luke 21, 36 with no context or explanation. So there you go. And this is their modus operandi when appealing to a proof text. Now, this other person here was at least industrious enough to provide the verse, but no further commentary was offered onto exactly how he knows this applies to me. But a rapture watcher's favorite Bible verse by far is in 2 Timothy when Paul says, a crown is laid up for those who have loved his appearing. To a rapture watcher, the only valid interpretation of this verse is that we all must live our lives on the high watch roller coaster, guessing which American president is the Antichrist in order to be eligible for this crown. Never mind the fact that Paul himself also gave a stern warning to ignore dopey false alarms. In fact, in that very same book of 2 Timothy, Paul called out some overly enthusiastic end times watchers who damaged people's faith with a wrong teaching. Paul explicitly told us to shun the profane idle babblings of those who keep guessing about end time events. It is not okay to spread false alarms based on dopey guesses that damage people's faith and embarrass the church. The same apostle who told you there's a crown for loving his appearing is the very one who told you not to soon be shaken by someone's wrong prediction. I am just as excited as you are that Jesus will one day split the eastern sky, appear before the world, and gather all saints to himself. I am excited that we have a blessed hope in escaping the destruction of this world to be with Jesus forever. And yet, as a Bible believer who accepts the full counsel of God's word, my excitement has to be tempered by safeguards against idle babblers. If your excitement is so undisciplined that you go from one idle babbler to the next, then you are disobeying the Bible. It is that simple. It isn't okay to make up dopey theories and promote false alarms about the blessed hope. Making stupid guesses based on nebulous tea leaves is idle babbling. It can give birth to destructive heresies and it can really hurt people. If you want to keep telling me no one falls away over false teachers, then you are calling Paul a liar. Never once on this channel have I come against the notion of the pre-trib rapture. Many in my audience are pre-trib believers. I have never mocked anyone for being a pre-trib believer. I have never mocked anyone for hoping a rapture may soon happen. I am right here in the trenches alongside you telling people Jesus is Lord and he will come back. But I want to be able to say those words without the baggage of Harold Camping. I want a church that has the credibility to say now is the time. I want to say look up when it's really time to look up. What I don't want is to be a worn out, burned out, disgruntled watcher who can't understand what's taking so long and becomes increasingly difficult to live with through daily harangues of doom and gloom. I don't want my friends and family to stop hanging out with me because they're tired of hearing it after 10 and 15 years. All y'all people who chased off your friends and family over rapture watching 
Imagine the credibility you would have now if you hadn't done it in the past. Imagine if you still had the ability to tell them now is the time and they thought you were actually serious. The devil has used an endless string of idle babblers to destroy your witness. Yes, yes, I know Noah warned the people for a hundred years, but did Noah give them a bunch of wrong predictions that embarrassed him and made him look like a false prophet? I am watching very soberly for the day I leave this world to be with Jesus, whether by rapture or death or whatever, I am watching that I will be found at my station doing what I need to do. I will not be found with an idle babble coming out of my mouth. I will not be found in the middle of another harangue at my exhausted spouse. I will not be found shipwrecking somebody's faith with another dopey teaching. That is a job well done by a good and faithful servant. And unfortunately, as I have noted on my channel, that is YouTube's least popular message. So go ahead, mock the size of my channel. Go ahead and call me jealous. Go ahead and call me lazy. Go ahead and call me whatever you like, because I know that those are your best arguments. Meanwhile, I will be busy recuperating your demoralized victims who come to me for support when they are done with you.